and uh, we'll see. Um, I don't think it's as much of an issue on the front as we usually. I just had a seagull hit my fly. Uh, Whoop. Uh, oh man, I'm getting crushed back here. I'm sorry. I just got absolutely hammered. How the hell did I not hook up? Welcome back to the Unknown Angler. This week we're going to discuss a tuna fly that I'm tying for uh, Patrick up in Cape Cod. Uh, I went up there last week uh, just to play around a little bit and we caught a bunch of uh, stripers on them. Uh, officially it hasn't caught any tuna yet, but uh, I'm hopeful. Well, I tell you what, if nothing else it looks great in the water. Pretty happy with the way it looks. Close to the close to the golf course. Oh, golf course. is it on Highland Road versus? Oh, there. That was we there. were on head of the meadow. That was a strike, huh? Yeah, yep. They're behind it. They're still behind it. Come on, fish. That's a beautiful looking fly. It is. I'd eat it. Maybe it has to be a tuna or a giant striper. Maybe it's only. Off the, if you off your back cast. Yeah, you know what? I just uh, oh okay. I um yeah, I just had cast. one I think just one just went for it on your back cast, I right? Just, as you I just had one slam it over there, so there he goes. Oh he's on. Yeah. Okay, they work. Yeah. What was this fly? This was the uh this was the tuna flies I've been tying them, but they're... But yeah, at least last year, that those mosquitoes were... Brutal. Um, brutal. Yeah, they were almost unbearable. Nice. I do. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I don't I don't attract to them myself all that Boy, much. Boy, that's a fatty. Problem is, I can't get a high rod tip in here because of the console. You know what? You make him you make him work for his money, honey. Nice fish. It's a four rod hook that ain't coming out of your hand very easily if it goes like in, that. just to let you know. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. This is a larger hook. It's a big hook. Yeah, if I didn't, if I didn't hook him, it wasn't a... Uh... Because oh, because it's coming to you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, don't worry, I'll tell you more. I know the guy. Um, but yeah, so, so yeah, we could hold on, Andy. They're up on our right hand side here. Oh, yeah, it's not as uh, packed as I think it would be. Oh, there we go. Come on. Nope. There we go. He took it. He came back. Came back a couple times. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. That was a hell of a flash for him. Is that a blue? No, it's a striper. Got a lot of, got a lot of company, too. What's that? She's the finger. There you go. Nice. Caught him right on the corner of the mouth, just like I wanted to. 
Okay, one last cast, Tony, and then we're... Uh, and we're going to go somewhere else and cast. <laughs> no. Cape Cod. He, uh, he told me this spring that he was going to start... Uh, start going after tuna this year so decided to tie a few bigger flies for him um, and try to get something that would uh, look good in the water and uh, mimic uh, all different kinds of either bait fish or or squid or just something with a lot of motion and a little bit of color a lot of flash in it anyway it, it so happened that I went down there and we uh, we fished for some stripers and these work well for stripers so I would tie these on size 4 ot. Let's do that. Size four aughts. Uh, the tarpon hooks from Mustad are fantastic for this, or the SL12Ss from uh, Gamakatsu <clears throat> are also very, very good. Uh, the 12Ss have a little bit longer shank, uh, but uh, the uh, tarpon hooks are great. I would go from four to, well, eight odd on these. Um, they start getting tough to cast on uh, eight weights uh, after you get it into the four aught size so these are big flies for uh for big fish just remember that anyway i'm going to start with some 240 oh excuse me 140 denier uh unithread just going to load up the hook shank with it just about to the bend you don't want to get into the bend because what we're going to do here is we're going to use Going to use some bucktail uh, to put in a tail and then put um, put a sort of a bulkhead style back here, the Popovich bulkhead style in the back. But I'm not going to use it for bulking out the fly. Um, what I'm going to use it for is a platform uh, for the hackles that I'm going to use for the back end of the fly. To right around where the hook bend is and then come forward uh, roughly a quarter inch roughly to where the hook point is right there pick out a good swedge of bucktail and uh, you want it to get be as long as you can but you want all the butts to be nice and flat so i'm going to cut those to flatten them out you want that to have about a half inch portion right in there and two loose wraps over the top squeeze it move it around that's yeah, pretty good distribution right there all right and you want to take a big pen Push it back. Now I can tell you the, the biggest mistake that gets made here when you're trying to tie this little bulkhead piece here. This is the Bob Popovich bulkhead type um, way of doing a bulkhead. However, I'm not doing a bulkhead to push a lot of water. What I'm doing a bulkhead for and you don't want to wrap over you see I'm building up a building up an area in front here also when you tie this in don't tie it too close to the hook bend because what you'll get is you'll get the tail that then goes down instead of having a nice straight tail that comes off this way anyway bottom line is is you want to build you want to build up a, a, a bit of a bump right in front of the bucktail but you don't want to wrap over the bucktail. So what you get is that nice cone shape that we have here all the way around. And just move it around with your fingers a little bit. Press around, maybe put a few more wraps in, but don't wrap over and don't take that and push it all back, okay? So there you have it. You have your tail now. What we're going to do here, Ackle, uh, this one's from uh, Stone River Outfitters. I love them. Uh, it's a deceiver cape. Um, this is not what I would consider to be a deceiver cape, but uh, yeah, it could be used for deceivers. 
these hackles are great for this kind of fly. These are the kind of hackles that we have here. You can also use packs of um, strung hackles. Uh, in this case, just match all the tips up here. Make sure all the tips are matched up. And then I'm going to do this off camera, but I'm going to put them on a ruler. And now I'm going to measure, I'm going to measure four inches off. Depending on the size of the fly you want, you could do much more or much less. But the idea is now I have all the hackles all the same length. Because what I'm going to do is tent this back end here with these hackles. So the way to do that, lay them on, put your thumb down, put a little bit of pressure on them. Start here and start tenting. Tenting meaning the curved side in. So you form, well, a kind of a little tent. And the idea about cutting them all at first is you line up all the butt ends now. And these hackles should be pretty close to uh, the right length. And you just move them around that cone that you built. So you start getting a buildup of hackles. And don't feel too bad about grabbing a hold of them, moving them around before you're done. So that you have the hackles nicely distributed around the base of the fly. Now whenever I see something like this where that's that's gotten off to one side like that, I'll correct it in place. Move it back around. And if it really feels like it's out of whack, like it is right now, I'm just going to put it back on again. Once again, um, take your time doing this because an errant hackle that is in the wrong position, I don't care how much you get it wet, it's going to stay like that. So think about that and see how that one twisted? Let pressure off of it. Nope. Not behaving itself. Do it again. Put my thumb on the top of it here. Keep it in position. Move it in. And you can see how we're getting kind of a nice flow in the back there. That nice... Uh, bulb type uh, shape that I'm looking to get. Nice oval. And these are all lining up quite well. The back here. Don't worry too much about how that looks right now. Other than the fact that you have everything nicely going back and you got this one right here is just not behaving itself but we're good anyway uh, I'm actually going to take two pink flat wing hackles also this is not necessarily uh, I like this it uh, gives a nice uh, and I'm going to cut those off uh, roughly two inches longer than the other hackles I'm going to place one on either side so Place one here. And take one. Place one over here. Uh, 
All right. So now you can see that nice hourglass shape kind of, uh, well, not hourglass, but that nice oval shape going back where you've, uh, you've tented all these hackles over the top of the hook. Uh, now we can add a little flash. Uh, I'd like to use polar flash for this. Uh, it's cut off uh, depending on how much flash you want to use. Uh, I would say this is eh, not too bad. You can taper the ends a little bit with your fingers. Just kind of pull on it, twist it around a little, get a little bit of a taper there. Um, you're going to double this over, so you want the length of the flash you're tying in to be about twice as long as what you want. Put your thumb down on the top of the hook, make one loose wrap over it, another loose wrap over it, and then just kind of move it around on the top of the hook. And make sure that you've got those splayed out. By the way, tie this uh, towards the... Uh, middle of the bunch that you excuse me towards the middle of the tying of where all the hackles are and then you can pull the second half of that over underneath the fly and do the same thing with your thumb there just kind of move things around so now you have a well distributed flash all the way around the fly perfect it's going to sit very nicely Okay, finish that off. Now you have a great back end to that fly. That's the back end. Now, just to finish it off, this is a pretty quick fly, fly to tie. Um, I make my own uh, brushes, but there's plenty of brushes out on the market. Uh, there's these flash blend, which are five inch brushes. Um, Baitfish brush from H2O. There's these great uh, Uglisi EP, uh, the Foxies, and the Crafter. Um, they're all they're all great brushes. They'll all work fine. Uh, you need to find some pretty long ones to do this. That's why I make my own. Uh, I used the Crafter brushes to get going when I first started out, uh, but then I bought an Oasis uh, dubbing brush maker, and uh, I will include at the end of the video a very quick uh, tutorial, hopefully really quick, I'll speed it up, on how I made this brush right here. Anyway, tie that in right at the base of the others. And you then Give yourself a little bit of room at the head. Then you can go in with the craft for brush. I'm gonna move a, a whole lot of stuff out of the way because I'm about to knock over some epoxy, which I don't want to do. And then pull all those fibers back. As you're working it forward. It's gonna look like a mess until you've finished it up. Okay. Take your time with these. Pull these fibers out with your fingers. Pull them all back. Try to pull them away from the, the center where you're, you're tying it in. I got it. And then don't overdo the head. Don't get that too close to the head. I got pretty darn close there. A couple of good wraps over. Pull the dubbing brush back. Um, good news is I can get three or four
wraps out of the dubbing brush. take a bodkin. Now it's a good idea to put just a single half hitch in here before you do the what I'm about to do with the bodkin because you don't want to pull everything out. And you can see how big and how long that dub those dubbing brush fibers are now. By the way, this the one I'm using here, uh, I use um, the five inch long, extra long crafter on it. Uh, the extra select is great stuff from Hairline, but there's even longer stuff out there. Uh, you know, use what you have and also tie this to whatever size you'd like. Uh, I'm doing I'm doing an apex, I do, I do these apex uh, flies with these dubbing brushes and the reason is is because the, the, <clears throat> the most weight we have here is the hook and five hot, four hot, five hot, six hot hooks are not light, they're big hooks. Um, they, they cast like anvils so uh, you want to keep the fly as light as you can so it, uh, it casts as nicely as possible. At the same time, you want a big enough profile on that fly. And this really creates that giant profile that you're looking. I mean, that's as big as my hand. And it casts like a dream on, on at least a 10 weight. The, the one I showed in the videos uh, before is this got my Scott Meridian 10 weight is what I'm casting it on. Um, and that... Uh, that uh, has no no issues at all casting the fly this big. Okay, and the way I'm going to finish this off, you'll see a lot of people, a lot of guys out there, put uh, eyes on these. I like to use these fake jungle cock eyes. Um, they can be a little bit difficult to find. Uh, I would just look up fake jungle cock. Uh, the pro line. Fake jungle cock is the ones I use. The extra large is the, the ones I use. Um, and they are perfect for this. And for those of you that are skiers, uh, they're made out of the same material that lift tickets are made out of. And if you've ever tried to take a lift ticket off your jacket, you know how hard it is. And I'm having a tough time right now because this one wasn't cut well. Uh, and I'm having a tough time removing it from the. So the, these aren't just paper. It's going to fall apart. Uh, jungle cock eyes. These are. These are uh, pretty darn healthy. Uh, and for the most part, they've lasted for the life of the fly for me. But it's a nice finishing touch. You don't need them, but they're a nice finishing touch. Uh, like to tie it just below the the white area give it a good tug on there this white area here give it another eighth of an inch quarter inch below it and time in as far as you'd like do that you want to glance you want to you know move your perspective and look that way down the fly to make sure they're lined up. If they're not, uh, they can cause a fly to helicopter. So uh, you want these to be pretty much in line with each other. And then just wrap over, make a nice neat head. And then finish it off. Nice 
whip finish. Yeah, add just a little bit of UV epoxy. Hit it with the light. You pop that out. And there you go. That's what we're looking for in a big apex fly. You could probably fish this for pike and um, and maybe some bass. This is this works. It seems to work really well on the uh, on the stripers. Uh, hopefully. Uh, Patrick will be able to get a couple of these out there. I tied them on some six ox for him, which are considered to be bigger than these, uh, a little bit uh, larger. Uh, I don't know why we call them dubbing brushes, hair brushes. Uh, I actually used some squimpish hair on that uh, extend a little bit longer. This fly is about six inches long. Uh, the entirety is back to the end of the pink. It's about five and a half. So you can tell from uh, my hand. Anyway, see you next time.